The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Easy Power Tuesday Refresher Series. My name is Jim Chastain. I'm a solutions engineer with Bentley. Today, we're in part two of the introduction to protective device coordination. And uh, as we are in the habit of doing, we'd like to start with a poll question and give everyone a chance to weigh in on their perspective on the material. So if you would please help us along by participating. First question. Is which type of protective device do you most often use? And again, this is strictly your uh, corner of the world, whatever you consider to be uh, predominant in your activity. Looks like we got a pretty good quorum and late arrivals. For those of you that are just joining us, trying to get some feedback from the audience, what do you most often use for protective devices in the systems you study? All right, let's close this one out and see how we did. So only a small portion are uh, utilizing the fuses, which is the topic of today's session. So welcome. And uh, heavy, heavy usage on breakers, excellent. So the next question is when using fuses, what part of the solution gives you the most difficulty? And again, this may be a reason that people don't use fuses more, but all the better to get into the weeds. There will be a certificate of attendance sent to everyone who attends today's session. You will receive those uh, presumed probably by the end of the week or early next week, so via, via email. So there's nothing else you have to do besides attend. All right, looks like we have a quorum here. And uh, excellent responses. <clears throat> I will be spending a lot of time on series rating and coordination. So that looks to be the, the focus of the attendees audience. So thank you for participating and welcome to all. I do mention that this is a four part series. Last week we covered the basic concepts of coordination and the use and uh, overview of TCC curves. We're going to be, we will be getting back into some of that today and repeat, frankly, some of the transformer protection guidelines that we discussed last week with respect uh, in particular to fuse protection. So again, we're going to talk about the use of TCC curves fair amount of time on series rating and series coordination, and then follow up with the, the latest update to the NEC guidance regards, regarding the use of current limiting fuses and how it applies to arc energy reduction options. So just to repeat, <clears throat> protections required or, or utilized to minimize equipment damage, reduce risk for personnel hazards, uh, very often meet legal requirements and insurer requirements. And in that regard, one of the functions that we want to be concerned with is that of coordination, uh, specifically selective coordination, which we defined last week as the study of a system's characteristics to determine optimum device settings such that 
to uh, the ability to isolate a load as close to the load as possible with a protective device next to it or next in line and prevent unnecessarily loss of uh, other parts of the system. Now it's it's worthy of note this last item the National Electrical Code only requires coordination on emergency and mission critical equipment. So it's not something that's required in everyday studies or analysis, but it's important to notice that very frequently the these ability to coordinate the protective devices can be, actually be contradicting the target of doing uh, mitigation. So the pro protection engineer must strike a balance between these two targets. And generally, um, there's some trade-offs involved. I may not be able to keep up with questions real time, but I'll check the question box periodically. So by all means, uh, utilize it. So in general, fuses are widely used because they provide a lower cost for the function or application. Uh, in today's world, most new fuses are current limiting, which means they've been designed and tested to clear in a one half cycle a fault as long as the current falls within the current limiting band. And you'll see as we get into easy power, there's a verification of that when the TCC curve is plotted. And if it's not in a current limiting band, the tools will not use it as a solution for our flash calculations. Usually, Fuses give us the highest interrupt rating uh, possible. The problem is they're a one-time device, so you need to have spares uh, for each system that's protected by fuses. They are useful for arc flash reduction, but there's a possibility of single phasing if uh, only one fuse of a three-fuse system blows, which could present problems uh, with rotating loads. And then there's always a chance of uh, replacement with the wrong fuse, either in values or misaligning manufacturers, because not all fuses are tested to the same or have the same TCC curves. So a lot of that comes into uh, personnel training to understanding that if you're going to replace one fuse, if only one fuse is blown, chances are the other two fuse uh, and the other phases have had some damage and may have a lower uh, ability to withstand a fault in the future. So the the old adage of uh, when one fuse goes out, replace all three certainly applies. And when we start talking about the National Electrical Code, uh, it describes equipment intending to interrupt current at fault levels should have an interrupt rating at nominal system voltage at least equal to the current that's available at the line terminals of the equipment. So, and this is called the withstand rating. Fuses generally have an extremely high interrupt rating, and if selected properly, several fuse types can be acceptable in a tested series combination. And here we're talking about uh, series rating specifically. And when we get to looking at a the application, the rating is used to determine the short circuit uh, current rating of the assembly, either in part or as a whole. And basically, when we're talking about a specific panel or bus, 
we calculate the rating for each element and the bus itself. And then it's a weakest link situation where the lowest the rating itself will be gated by the lowest short circuit rating for any part of the assembly. And that's why when it comes to doing panel assembly or uh, customized sub-assemblies, they need to be tested separately by the manufacturer of the lab. Now, equipment duty of uh, specifically breakers and fuses may vary uh, differently based upon the type of circuit that they're installed. And this one line that I'm showing on the screen is an example of what, <clears throat> what Easy Power allows or permits in a feature called Smart Duty. And what it boils down to is we've, we've discussed over and over during a short circuit analysis, the tool will calculate, let's say during the first half cycle of a fault, the con contribution current from each, uh, each part of the system. So in this particular case, if we have a three phase bolted fault on switch gear four, we'll see 18,706 amps coming from upstream We'll see 2,108 amps coming from this motor control center, 1,897 coming from this motor, and 1,422 uh, coming from this motor control center. So the ratings, the, the duty rating, is calculating the current through the device and comparing it to a the current rating that we get from the manufacturer's data sheet. And so we talk in terms of this being the available fault current. Well, it turns out if this is the fault current, this breaker does not see that full current. What it sees is the sum of all the other sources less the contribution current coming from this uh, motor control center. So for an equipment duty rating, Easy Power automatically calculates the number we get off the data sheet for the, the device itself and compares it to the threshold that we set of a negative 10% of the actual current that is ex exposed to a worst case fault. Uh, now, when that current is exceeded or when that rating is exceeded, it's called, it's underrated for the application or it's overdutied and easy power will show us a result in that or that flag to that effect. So let's kind of walk through this. If I look at that circuit in easy power, and I don't mean to, to beat a dead horse, but this, this is uh, fairly crucial to understanding. We have all the breakers are rated at 25,000 amps. Now, when I open up a, a breaker dialog box, I can see I have the manufacturer part number, <clears throat> all the details to be able to find it in the device library. I have a frog in my throat. So much for frogs. Um, and once we've filled in those elements, we want to go to the short circuit tab. <clears throat> And even though this says it's rated for 25,000 amps, the fact that I don't have auto calculate checked means uh, it, may or, it may have been changed and then wasn't rechecked against the device library. So I'm going to click on auto calculate and I see that number changed to 42. That means either I entered it wrong or I, uh, I changed it without updating the auto calculate. So I'm going to go back and and leave that as it was just for this example. And we'll, but the, the point to be made, uh, this example was constructed before the auto calculate was a built in function of Easy Power's capabilities to do this automatically. So by default, I want to go through and make sure I have auto calculate set on all my devices. But I digress. 
So each of these is rated for 25,000 amps. If we go to short circuit focus, we look at a half cycle, three phase bolted fault. and We fault just this one bus. Again, we see those numbers that I had on the PowerPoint slide. Now I want to calculate equipment duty. Equipment duty, as again, is comparing this number with the threshold that's said it's 10% less from whatever that number we get from the data sheet. And it's set up in short circuit options under control. The equipment duty threshold is down here in the bottom third. And right now I have it set at 25%. I want to set it at negative 10%. See if that changes anything. So again, it's going to compare the device current ratings with a number that's 10% low, lower than the number we get from the data sheet. And as I do that, I can go to equipment duty. And the point I'm trying to make, even all the uh, all of these devices were set up with a 25%, excuse me, a 25,000 current rating. This one is shows a negative 1%, which means it's still compliant, but it's within that 10% threshold. This one has a positive 1%, which means it's not compliant, it's being overdutied. This has a 2% positive. So out of the elements that are going to the short circuit current rating, I've got two, the, the fuse itself and this main breaker, this one feeder that are within the 10%, but they're still compliant with the uh, maximum rating. And I've got two breakers that are uh, in violation. And I can get that detail if I go in short circuit options, create an equipment duty report and show all devices. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is, is this smart duty capability of easy power, which shows me that I have a rating of 25,000 amps during a worst case fault. I'm still within, within the 1% or 10% that I set as a threshold. But on these other two devices, because they have less feedback current than the BL2, they are being overdutied. Now, with all that said, it's obvious I clearly made a mistake when I was uh, when I was doing my calculations or doing my modeling because I didn't have these connected update uh, to the device library. So the solution in this case is go back to the dialog box, make sure I auto calculate. And I can see now the data sheet includes a render up rating of 42,000 amps. And we'll do that on each of them. Just because I want to show it. Any questions about this? So the, 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 the feature is called Smart Duty. The Easy Power takes care of this. The one thing I want to make sure is I've uh, set these up correctly. And to do that, I want to make sure I'm connected to the device library, which is the function of auto cal calculate. Any questions about that? Now, as I go back to short circuit, fault this bus by double clicking on it, and I look at equipment duty, I see now I have ratings on these breakers that are clearly good, and we're still within 10% of uh, the threshold for that one report. I'm at that one device. If I go in and look at my duty, it's the bus itself, which is rated for 28,000 amps. Um, that's that's on the verge of being non-compliant. Now, just for what it's worth, that number can't auto-calculate because it has to come from the, the, the nameplate on the panel and the ratings for the the bus work itself, and that is set up right here for my bracing uh, my bracing uh, data that I got from the manufacturer's data sheet or the nameplate. Okay, so that's the function of 
smart duty and the fact that it was shown in uh, equipment duty. Okay, so it can be shown in short circuit reports, but the more accurate result is in equipment duty because it includes the smart duty and the threshold. Uh, and, and because for some reason I had it set up with a negative 25%, um, so you can set that threshold wherever you want it. Now the details of all this, how this is done, are included in the help documentation. When I go there, I can see under the ANSI short circuit reference, a discussion about fused duties and how it's calculated from uh, the IEEE standards. Um, now let's talk about interrupt rating. Interrupt rating is a different ball of wax altogether. Basically, in a fully rated system, everything is individually rated. And again, that's that number that I pull from the data sheet and from the device library. And so in this particular circuit, each of my devices, both the main breaker and the downstream breakers, are rated for 65,000 amps. When I do a short circuit calculation, I see 31,400. So each element, and I'm assuming that the, the bus work is braced properly, each element can survive this fault uh, and operate correctly according to the manufacturer's specifications downstream for a fault downstream. Uh, and so this is regarded as a fully rated system and that it that allows us to have selectively coordinated devices because now that both uh, systems will operate at the same fault current at whatever their data sheet suggests. And again, this is part of the, the data sheet that's in the device library. Now, series rating is a situation where we may have downstream elements or breakers and feeder breakers that aren't meeting compliance to the fault current that's available. And so these, in this particular case, are rated for 10,000 amps. But in a worst case fault, I'm going to see 31,400. And my primary overcurrent device is rated for 65,000. So the upstream protective device and the downstream circuit breaker, if they're tested to, to withstand this current, can be considered series rated. So both, what that means is, if I've tested the combination of whatever this, whether it's a breaker or a fuse, whatever the uh, combination of this device and this particular breaker is, and it's been tested to survive 31,000 amps, then I can, I can say it's been series rated. In, in the case of uh, a fault downstream, both devices are likely to clear at the available fault current, and in some cases, it may be damaged, damaging to the downstream breaker, but it will survive up to that particular amount of fault current. Now, Easy Power does not provide series rating for fuses because they must be manually entered if I've uh, determined through whatever means that there is a series rating effect. Now, what? What that means or what I'm trying to say is, I, I hear a lot of people say, well, all I have to do is put in a, a current limiting fuse, then I can improve all the downstream uh, equipment ratings, or all the short circuit current uh, ratings. If you look at uh, the National Electrical Code, Article 240.86, it specifically requires a PE stamp to apply this philosophy to an existing system. And when there's an, and I mean, I'm, I'm emphasizing that because it's not something that you should take lightly just because 
a fuse salesman says, yeah, all you have to do is put in a current limiting fuse and everything's going to be kosher. So according to the National Electrical Code, this requires a PE stamp and documentation of when this particular combination of devices was tested. Non-trivial, but I hear people seem to be a little bit cavalier about it. Just my take. Okay, back on coordination, uh, selective device coordination. If we have a fault downstream, that fault current will be felt or sensed by three devices. The feeder breaker, the main breaker, and then the primary fusing. Ideally, we want things to uh, break or clear the fault with the feeder breaker first, the main breaker second, and then if those two haven't cleared the fault, then at some point in time, the primary fusing will open. Well, the way this is determined is by applying the fault damage curves uh, for on a TCC plot. And while not all uh, fuses are current limiting, more of the more and more of the more recent uh, versions are current limiting. Uh, so you got to be careful that you're not replacing current limiting fuse with a non-current limiting fuse as far as replacement. And that's a function of this little notch that can't, in, in the type of holder that we're using, we can't replace one with the other. So typical low voltage fuses for fuse for TCC curves include a minimum melt, which is usually the left hand side of the band, or if that's what we're given, the uh, library will tell us whether it's a minimum melt, the minimum melt, the maximum melt, or the average melt, and the and the thickness of the manufacturing curve. Easy power <clears throat> adds additional time, whether it's plus or minus ten percent based upon what the manufacturers provided. Most manufacturers will uh, publish the potential for coordination of current limiting fuses as long as you have a two to one size ratio between the upstream device and the downstream device. And again, Easy Power doesn't it's not something Easy Power has in the device library as far as the coordination combination. So if we apply this to transformer protection, we have a couple a couple elements that we need to pay attention to when we, we're using uh, fuses for transformer protection. One of which, if we have primary protection, the, the protective device must be able to withstand or not react to an inrush, which is this dot down on the TCC curve uh, determined by the properties of the transformer. And part of it is the inrush is very high in harmonics, and it's a little bit difficult to predict with any specificity. So by assumptions, uh, an 8 to 10 times the full load current for a tenth of a second, and it can be a a change based upon what your particular systems uh, have, have utilized for the transformer. And it's based on the self cool ratings. Fortunately, Easy Power handles the math to determine how these limits affect our TCC curve. Now, for those of you that weren't with us last week, the TCC curve for the transformer are these two parallel lines up here. The dotted line is 100% damage curve. The solid line is a 58% offset for primary protection for a single line to ground. And if that's uh, foreign to terminology, you may want to go back and listen to part one. So the National uh, Electrical Code has a couple tables, uh, 453B and 453A, that gives us the conditions of primary protection and secondary protection 
primary over a thousand and for secondary over a thousand and less than a thousand and gives us categories for different uh, uh, impedance ratios and whether or not we're using breakers or fuses for for protection in the primary or secondary. Now, this information that we're talking about is a percentage of full load current. So if we are using fuses in the primary side where we have greater than a thousand volts in the primary, and we're doesn't matter whether we're over six percent or less than six percent, this table is telling us we can go to three hundred percent of the full load current as a recommended protective device uh, for a fuse protection. Well, let's just kind of walk through one of these examples. First of all, uh, we emphasize the, the need or the benefit of taking an image, a digital image, of the nameplate, uh, specifically of transformers, because they have a lot of data there that may be useful even for future studies. So we see this nameplate says the KVA rating is 1000 KVA. The primary current is 13.2 KV. The secondary current is wired for 480 volts. The impedance ratio is 5.55%. The type of uh, construction is OA, which means there's oil filled and there's not forced air. And then it's uh, rated for 65, cent, uh, 65 degree rise. And primary current is 43.78 amps at full load. So how did that stack up to our protection chart? First of all, it's over a thousand volts. It's less than 6%. And so we say on the primary side, we can use 300% of full load current. On the secondary side, because it's 480 volts, we're gonna use, we can only use a maximum of 125% of full load current. So calculating full load current for the primary, again, is gonna be 43.74 amps. Secondary is gonna be 1202 amps. So for fuse primary protection, we're talking about a fuse of 131 amps and a secondary total current of uh, 1,500 amps. So let's look at the TCC curve. And we want to look at zero one fuse protection. So let's Now, this this usually surprises a lot of folks that just went through that chart with me. So we're based upon that chart, we're going to choose a fuse that's 300% uh, of the full load current, which is going to be about 131 amps. So to do that, we're going to pick out a Just a fuse I'm familiar with on the primary side. A fuse link from AB Chance. We're going to have it a Model T just because it's slower acting. And we're going to pick 130 amps. The next highest category is 140. So we're going to select that. Now, this is the part that can connect to the device library when I auto connect. Now, it's showing that this fuse is tested to an ANSI standard using asymmetrical current or symmetrical current with an X over R environment at the test fixture of 15. This type of fuse does not have a holder, so there's no interrupt rating um, in this particular case, in case you were wondering. Now, this section down here, we, we're gonna, when we get to the TCC plot, we're going to, when there's a fault on the downstream bus, it's going to plot the, the current during the first half cycle going through this fuse. And it'll show me a tick mark. Okay, I'm going to pick a fuse out of here. And it's going to be a busman. 
and KRP CL current limiting and it's a fuse and it's sized for 125 cent percent is going to be 1500 amps and make sure we have auto calculate now again it's got a fuse holder so it's rated for 200,000 amps it's tested to a different x over r than the the primary fuse and again we're going to show the tick mark for a half cycle fault current okay i'm going to select this and look at the tcc curves so i'm going to go into coordination plot the curves now what are we doing let's let's go ahead and fault this bus by double clicking on it and we're going to be focusing on if we look down at the bottom of my chart well, let's scroll out a little bit what i'm looking for is there it is the voltage that we're that we're plotting this with reference to so right now we are referencing this to current in the 480 volt range so if i'm going to look at the primary let's scroll back in this is my 100 percent damage curve excuse me this is my full load curve for the the transformer in the 480 volt domain so if i hover over it i can look down at the bottom of the screen and i see my full load current is 1282 which is exactly what we calculated by hand and i can see that the that the fuse so this is a little confusing the fuse in the primary current is not 9000 amps i'm going to put this in the 138 point or 13.2 range by right clicking on this upper primary uh, bus and set it as a reference so now i can see i'm looking at a reference in the 13.2 range my full load current and primary current again i'll look down at the bottom of the screen and we calculated it to be 43 amps we're showing if i hover over it 40.1 and if i look at the fuse that we said if i look at the bottom 351 amps is the uh, is the full load current for, for a primary protection through this fuse well that's quite a bit higher than my 131 amps that i was looking for three times 42 is going to be 131 so what's my 140 amp fuse doing over here well it's not a 140 amp fuse this needs to be something quite a bit lower because the fuse isn't protecting the transformer in any way shape or form if i take off this secondary fuse i can see that this fuse is not protecting the transformer either from a full load 100 percent damage curve or the single line to ground fuse so what are we going to do about that well if i have double click on the dialog box and i say let's take this back down to 30 amps and see what happens now now it, it makes sense i got a 30 amp fuse and my 100 percent current is 40 amps so a 30 amp fuse is going to be good protection for a 40 amp primary full load current all right so that's going to protect me both from frequent faults it's going to protect me from single line to ground faults if i right now if do a fault on this curve on this downstream bus make it a single line to ground fault the fuse has given me uh, very nice protection from, ex from exceeding the 
shifted curve for a single line to ground. Um, okay, so sometimes that, that takes people a little off uh, guard when they realize that the fuse rating and what's recommended from the NEC code uh, are a little bit askew. Now let's go back and look at the um, secondary. I'm going to close this and not save it. And then replot it so I can get my secondary fuse. Now, the secondary fuse uh, looks like it's miscoordinated from the primary side. And if we want our secondary protection to trip before we lose everything, we probably need to scale this a little bit differently. So instead of the 1200 amps that we were talking about, if we want to have protection for a through. Now, the secondary side isn't subject to this uh, shifted fault current, shifted uh, single line to ground fault. And so we can actually have protection equal to or, or better than So we're not worried about the uh, secondary protection in the shifted curve, but if we're worried about coordination, then we need to have something like this uh, as far as the relationship between these two. So, so right now I'm looking at the 480 volt range. I can see my full load current is 1200 amps. I can see my secondary protection is 983 over time and it's well within the maximum that the National Electrical Code allows me. Now, so what's the downside of doing this? Well, we're losing a little capacity from the transformer. And so it depends on one, the trade-offs and using more of capacity and maybe having a different protection scheme or including a neutral line to ground resistor. Okay, coordination. Coordination primarily uh, involves testing from the manufacturer. And so here's an example from the, uh, I think it's, Little fuse, yeah, I knew I had it on there somewhere. And so for an L class, LDC, to, to coordinate with an L, a KL DC, we need to have a ratio of two to one between any two fuses in series, all the way up the category until we get to uh, a current range of uh, 600 amps for the FL and R series. And so the, the manufacturer is saying, as long as we have these ratios, it will be coordinated with these different um, families. So if we pick out an RK1 for a circuit and have the uh, same amp range, on a two to one basis, they should coordinate with this LDC part on the line side of the fuse. So let's see how this looks. Let's close this one. And not save it. And then open up. Okay, so if we have them in the same family.
So we have so we have Busman. Let's see what I have for And so if we look at the Busman leg for motor protection for this downstream motor, we can see we have two different fuses, 150 amp fuse and a 300 amp, and then a 600 amp, they're in series. And so we can see they're, they're nicely coordinated and they provide us pretty decent uh, protection for the motor, uh, for the motor starting curve with the exception of probably the thermal damage curve, which falls into this area. Uh, let's try a different, different TCC curve. So what I'm trying to emphasize is that if you stay with a single manufacturer, you can go with this 2X where we have 800 amp downstream and a 1600 amp uh, upstream, and they will retain coordination. In this case, protect the cable that's uh, at least for a certain percentage of the uh, value. Now, if we have the, the ability to guarantee coordination between two different manufacturers is limited. And uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to go uh, with that recommendation. In other words, whether a, does a busman coordinate with a Merson, it could be yes or it could be no based upon what, what kind of your trying to protect. So the bottom line is comparing a 200 amp to a 400 amp in the same family and part type uh, will be recommended on the manufacturer's data sheet. Uh, these are not included in easy power, but the TCC plot makes it kind of obvious uh, that it's going to coordinate. Any questions about that? Okay, now fuses with motor uh, mold decay circuit breakers can be a little tricky because they're both have clearance of a fault or they're guaranteed to operate within a single cycle. And so here's the case where the coordination has to be tested by the manufacturer. And frankly, it's not always available for different manufacturers. So you may want to uh, have test if you've find yourself in this situation where you're trying to coordinate between breakers and fuses, you may want to have a test lab set up. Well, so to look at an example, this is drawn from the Eaton Busman catalog. We show for a breaker in the FD series, in these minute amp ranges, we'll coordinate with fuses on uh, in the cube fuse family of all these different values. So let's see what my example shows. Okay. Now we're going for Eaton Busman. Okay, in the two forty volt range.
again, what we're doing is combining breakers and fuses and to see how they coordinate according to the manufacturer's data sheet. and plots, we're showing that the breaker, which is the hockey stick or golf club looking plot compared with FS1, which is this fuse down here, for motor protection looks pretty good. Again, we're we're disregarding the thermal damage curve for the motor, but the uh, fuse, because it's been tested to work with this breaker, makes a nice plot. So again, this is based upon the manufacturer's data sheet. And the same is true for 480 volts. So did I look at both of them? This was 240. So any questions about this? This is the advantage of having uh, the TCC curves and manufacturer's data updated as long as I've auto-calculated auto my TCC setup. OK, one more thing before we get into the so yeah so again because the manufacturers tested it that's this is not something that i would be comfortable with making the comparison without the backing of the test results the manufacturer's providing. So we're showing the fuse is coordinating with the upstream breaker. Okay. Okay, a couple other things I wanted to touch on. And these were changes in the uh, 2020 National Electrical Code. And the effect these particular articles, and they're prim primarily all critical uh, function circuits and apply to fire systems and medical centers. And that is normally when you have uh, coordination, there was some confusion over how coordination should be handled between normal operations and emergency operations. And so the uh, figure added in 708.54 shows how D has to be coordinated with C, C has to be coordinated with B, and A, A and B can be the same values. They don't have to necessarily be miscoordinated. Whereas we're, if we flip over to the, to the generator side, C has to be coordinated with D, F has to be coordinated with C, and E has to be coordinated with F. So it um, it answers it answers a question on how we're going to handle overcurrent protection when there's a transfer switch involved. Okay, got a question coming in. Um, Harold saying, I have a motor fed through a panel with an arc flash analysis and the main breaker of the panel is not integrated into the calculation. They said I have to determine the external motor branch as a sub panel. Um, you know, Harold, I'd have to, to see the, uh, I'd have to see the one line diagram file before I can kind of give you a, a, an estimate of my opinion. I can't just kind of flip it out without giving more data on it. 
And then uh, I've seen panel seen panel board companies that will publish series coordination tests often with a CL fuse upstream to get 200,000 amps. What about the equipment that does not have to be tested for series rating? Uh, this is a good question. Not that Harold is not that good. What about the equipment that does not have a tested series rating? This recent example was a motor starter without tested series rating. Can we use the CL upstreams to limit the fall? So, so according to the so the question he's asking is that can we use the CL fuse upstream to limit the fault current without a tested study? The the standard says uh, a certified PE must make the judgment, and um, if you feel comfortable based upon the the data that you are show or you're looking at, then it's the responsibility rests on, rests on your shoulders to document how you made that judgment. And that's why very few PEs that I talk to want to crawl out on a limb unless they've actually seen the test, as, the test results. So it, it's a personal judgment and it's not something I can comment on further. Okay, in addition, in the 2020 uh, National Electrical Code, there is a requirement to reduce arc energy, and it's in Article 240.67, and it applies to fuses rated over 1,200 amps or higher. The uh, standard was actually uh, originally including this in 2017, and it gave the effective date of 2020, so now it's in the code as well. And you need to be able to provide documentation to demonstrate the method if you've chosen to reduce clearing time for those circuits and the method used to reduce clearing time if the, if the clearing time is within, is greater than 70 milliseconds. So again, it only applies to uh, systems rated 1200 amps or higher with a clearing time longer than 70 milliseconds. And then an evaluation of the TCC curve in the arc current is required. Now, IEC uses 1584 to calculate arcing current uh, for reduced current if up to 106,000 kiloamps. So beyond 106,000 amps, Easy Power uses Rothley method. And what it boils down to is if we have a, a bunch of loads, here we got from 21,000 amp to 107,000 amps, and we calculate instant energy on each one. We see that one of the, actually two of the systems are at 70 milliseconds or less. Uh, the 1500 amp with the fuse and the 2000 amp with the fuse. The other three are exceeding that 70 millisecond time. And so we have to provide some sort of uh, mitigation. And document what we've done to uh, reduce clearing time. And these give us a choice between differential relaying, maintenance mode, energy reducing active arc flash mitigation like Anufis, current limiting electronically activated fuses or an approved equivalent means. And things are uh, kind of evolving as far as protective schemes where devices are available like current limiting electrically act actuated fuses weren't available 10 years ago. And so differential relaying is something we're all basically familiar with, which compares incoming current to the outgoing current uh, from the feeders and gives us a protection zone based upon faults. And then energy uh, reducing maintenance switching, which we've uh, covered ad nauseum, but allows the fuse equipped with an energy reduction maintenance switch to provide protection. And again, it's switching in a fuse 
that will trip faster based upon determining the downstream fault. And so here's just an example that I picked off the internet, which gives those capabilities in a single device that can be uh, ground fault detection, arc flash reduction, maintenance mode, and zone selective interlocking all in one package. And so what, in terms of what they do to um, mitigate the, using fuses, is they'll have a slower fuse for normal operations and a relay that's sensing the current and on an arc energy fault, it will switch to a faster acting fuse. And some of these, well, I'm, I'm running out of time, but some of these are available from different manufacturers and they provide a way to uh, do system retrofits if you have a problem with your whole plant. And then we mentioned the art quenching or the UFAS situation. And uh, again, it's an active arc flash mitigation system. You need to contact the manufacturer for the details. Some people are finding this as a more economical way to go, especially when you have a lot of uh, motor control centers. So basically we've talked about system coordination with fuses and economical uh, drawbacks. Transformer protection is critical and proper data entry will ensure the equipment TCCs can be used accurately. And frankly, arc energy reduction is now required by the National Energy Electrical Code. Thanks for attending today. Next week, we're going to be talking about breakers and coordination. And uh, we missed our on <laughs> online personal uh, instructor-led training. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Any questions I wasn't able to get to, I will answer via email. Have a good day.